Welcome to module seven. In this module, we are going to continue talking about inventory. Um, so the place to start this module is to actually think about a few inventory transactions that a company may have. So uh, let's say we're Walmart, the largest retailer in the world. And let's say we buy a pair of socks and socks to Walmart are inventory, of course. So we go to Hanes, uh, which is a big supplier of socks in this world. And we say, hey, Hanes, we want a pair of socks. Now, when Walmart buys socks, of course, they buy them for less than they're planning to sell them for. So let's say they buy them from Hanes for $2 and they're planning to sell to the customer for $5. So uh, it is January 1st. 2017 Walmart buys the socks for uh, well they don't buy anything for cash they buy them on account and when they debit they, they don't debit socks they debit inventory and of course they would note okay this is Hanes white tube socks and you know there'd be an SKU number a shopkeeping unit number associated with them but we're just gonna say inventory uh, for two bucks and credit AP for two bucks uh, and let's just say they sell those socks on January 2nd. So uh, they sell them for five bucks. So of course they go debit cash because Walmart charges you money right away. Five bucks, credit sales, revenue. This is what Walmart does to earn money. They sell things. So debit cash, credit sales. But simultaneously, whenever they sell something, there's two transactions happening at once. So debit cash credit sales to say, hey, we've made a sale. But the other thing that happens is you walk out of the store with some of their inventory. So credit inventory, two bucks, and debit this account called cost of goods sold. And we've talked about this account before. This is an expense account. and uh, it's a special expense account because it doesn't have the word expense in it, but it's one that as an investor, a shareholder, or a company owner, you'd be very interested in. You're particularly interested in this ratio, the ratio of cost of goods sold compared to sales. Uh, you want to know how much above cost you are able to charge your customer. So a uh, very interesting number. Uh, and because of it, when we prepare financial statements with cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold is an expense that gets top billing. Okay, so we have uh, done it. We've done a basic journal entry. And if this were all there was to inventory, inventory wouldn't be complex. But we're about to see what makes inventory a little bit more complex now. Let's uh, go to that same example. It's January 1st. We're Walmart. We buy a pair of socks for two bucks. Of course, it's ridiculous. Walmart is never going to buy one pair of socks at a time, but hey, uh, the things we do for accounting examples. Okay, so we buy our pair of socks for two bucks, but this time nobody buys them. And uh, on January 2nd, we say to ourselves, you know, it's ridiculous. We've got one pair of socks sitting on the shelves. Let's put another pair out there. And we go to Hanes. We say, hey, Hanes, we need another pair of socks. Hanes says, absolutely, Walmart. But you know, our costs have gone up. It's going to cost you $2.10. Walmart thinks to themselves, well, we're going to sell it for 5 bucks. $2.10 isn't too much to ask. So Walmart buys it. Debit inventory to 10 Credit AP to 10. Uh, January 3rd rolls around and once again um, Walmart looks at the shelves and they say hey we have two pairs of socks sitting there we got the one that we bought for two dollars on January 1st the one we bought for 210 on January 2nd we could sure use a third pair of socks so they call Hanes and Hanes once again <laughs> just because this is a nice accounting example they once again say well, Walmart, uh, it's going to cost you, and it's going to cost you more than two ten. This time, it's going to cost you two fifty. And Walmart's thinking to itself, "Well, nah, well, the accountant or purchasing agent is thinking to themselves, well, we're selling it for five bucks. All right, we'll take the deal." Walmart would never take that deal if, if prices were increasing like that. I, I don't think they would. They have real power over their suppliers. They would be able to negotiate something better. But for the sake of our accounting example, let's just pretend that happened. 
So then January 4th rolls around and somebody buys a pair of socks. So uh, they go Walmart, of course, we're looking at Walmart, Walmart collects their cash. Now, again, these don't have three different price tags on the shelves. They're the same pair of socks. They just cost Walmart more each time they bought them because costs of inventories will change over time. Uh, so Walmart goes debit cash, five bucks, right? That's what they charge. Credit, sales revenue, five bucks. Now here's the tricky part. And of course, when we sell something, we debit cost of goods sold, COGS, and we credit our inventory. But the question is, for how much? And that's what this chapter, at least the early portion of the module, is all about. Like, how much should I debit COGS and credit inventory if, if this is a scenario? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on the inventory method being chosen by the company. So there's, in Canada, really three commonly used methods in this and most of the world agrees on three methods the u.s has one extra method that it, it uses uh, although the rest of the world kind of has has moved on from that method so the three that are commonly agreed upon the first is called fifo fifo stands for first in first out so let's assume Walmart's doing FIFO in the above example. If they're doing FIFO, I think of FIFO, when I think of FIFO, I think of um, uh, like milk at a grocery store, that grocery store is definitely wanting to do FIFO with their inventory. Uh, whether they're doing it with their costing method, I'm not sure, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to sell you the oldest milk first, right? I'm always like reaching back to the back and over things and climbing up uh, like Spider-Man into the, the milk uh, refrigerator trying to get the, the freshest milk, which is always at the back. Well, the, the um, grocery store, though, is trying to sell its oldest milk first. And so FIFO says, look, let's assume most customers aren't like Tony Bell crawling around your milk uh, uh, refrigerator. They just take the one that's in the front. We put the one in the front that's the oldest because we, of course, want to sell the oldest inventory first. So if that were the case, our oldest inventory is this $2 inventory that we bought on January 1st. So first in, first out, our cost of goods sold is $2. Debit, COGS, credit inventory, $2 for January 4th. If the company is using first in, first out. If, however, the company is using another method, and, and often I ask my class, and this is a common one, they say, they say, hey, just take the average. And there is a method called weighted average or average cost. I call it the weighted average method. And the weighted average method, you would take the average. Now, I want to be clear, it's a weighted average. Like, if I... Um, uh, fill up my car and I put, and I'm going to speak in liters and dollars per liter, if it's a dollar a liter for gas, okay, and I put uh, 30 liters in my car for a dollar a liter, and and then I, I'm driving across town and I see there's a big sale on gas, 50 cents a liter, it's half price, and I put in, and I, my car's got a full tank basically, I've just driven around town a little bit, I end up putting in two liters at 50 cents each, is the average cost of gas in my car 75 cents, like a dollar for some, 50 cents for the other bit, and the average 75 cents? No, of course not, because I put in 30 liters at a dollar. I only put two in at 50 cents. The average cost has got to be weighted, and it'll be more in favor of the 30 liter amount. Uh, we'll explain how to do weighted average la later, but because we have three pairs, our weighted average cost here just are, is just going to be our average cost is $2.20. I just add up the three numbers and divide by three. I can take a simple average. So our COGS here is 2 plus 210 plus 250. That's 660 divided by three, $2.20. Okay, so that's my weighted average cost. My uh, third method is called specific unit identification, specific unit ID. You wouldn't likely see Walmart doing this for socks, but what this method says is, well, which unit did the customer grab? Were they like Tony Bell crawling around, grabbing the one in the back? If they grabbed one on the back, well, that's the one we sold. Uh, which physical pair of socks did they buy? Did they buy the one we purchased on January 1st, January 2nd, or January 3rd? Um, that's our cost of goods sold. 
Now, Walmart wouldn't do this for socks, but Toyota would do this with Toyota Matrixes or Toyota Yaris's or Toyota uh, whatever other Corollas. Uh, you know, they're, if, if you run a Toyota dealership and you have uh, 10 Toyota Corollas on the lot, uh, and a customer comes in and buys one, you don't say, oh, what was the average cost of my 10 Toyota Corollas? No, no, no. You say, which specific one did they buy and what was the cost I paid to my, uh, you know, the manufacturer to buy this uh, Toyota Corolla? That's what I'm interested in. If you sell big equipment, if you sell unique equipment, if you sell um, uh, anything that should be tracked individually, you would use specific unit ID. So specific unit ID, the COGS, I'm just going to say, which one did we sell? Whatever one we sold, that's the cost of goods sold. And we got to keep track. So those are the three that are widely accepted. Those are the three methods widely accepted worldwide. Our friends in the US, our cousins in America, also have one other method that is widely used still. It's not allowed worldwide. I'll discuss why in a minute. I, I think they should stop using it, frankly. Um, you know, it doesn't make a lot of accounting sense to me, but we'll talk about it in a moment. And the, the my cousins in the States, they still use L-I-F-O, LIFO. You probably can guess what that stands for. That stands for last in, first out. Okay, so last in, first out. If I were using last in, first out for this problem, uh, I would look at the last one I purchased and I would say, oh, okay, that's the one I sold. So debit inventory, credit AP, 250. So my COGS would be, when I sell it, 250. All right, so I've kind of made that red and I've said, oh, the world's turned its back on LIFO. Here's why. If you think about it, the first in is still here, right? The old, if you think about it, the milk is the example. If I were using LIFO for milk, it would mean my oldest milk is the milk that I would hold on to for the longest. And our accounting records would reflect uh, we have our oldest milk still on the shelf. Well, that doesn't reflect reality, right? I, I always think maybe I'm a little bit... Uh, of an idealist here. But I do think accounting should reflect the, the underlying reality of a company and an accountant should do their best to reflect the underlying realities of a company. Well, if I'm a company that's continually traded in the same inventory, let's say it's milk, right? <laughs> I, I have the same type of milk. I have one skew of milk I've had for 40 years. Well, if I'm using LIFO and presumably if I never run out of milk, I always have a nice supply of milk. I could have milk that's on my accounting records that's at the original cost I paid 40 years ago. Now, what does that mean for me? It means my cost of goods sold is actually uh, higher than it ought to be. It's, it's inflated above what it ought to be. And therefore, my net income is lower than it ought to be. You might say, well, why would people do this? Why would they want to deflate their net income? Well, this is one way to kind of defer taxes. You reduce your income without changing any economic reality of your company and because of it you're able to defer taxes so that's why it's it's semi i won't say super popular semi popular in the u.s and there's all sorts of disclosure issues around lifo that there's a lot more disclosures necessary uh, when companies do choose to use lifo but i am uh, not a fan on a fundamental level i just think look um it's very unlikely that inventory is sh shifted around in a LIFO manner in reality. And many companies show very old inventories on their books that are really no longer there. So I don't think it reflects reality, but we'll, we'll talk about it in uh, coming problems. So those are really the four big methods. And again, uh, for, for, for our purposes, uh, we'd spend most of our time on FIFO and weighted average, although we do touch on LIFO in the coming videos. So stay tuned. We're going to jump into some problems.